Um, and I had a whole eat love to it, whether I'm going to teach you this part or not teach you this part um, at the end of the last lesson. But I, I have to, I have to, because I just, and my last is so interesting also. Um, so, so let's quickly read the end of the chapter. And it goes like this. Okay. Um, we're going to learn from, uh, from, the, from chapter, from verse 7. Okay. Chapter 3, verse 7. In the, sev- in the, in the first month, Nisan, in the twelfth year of the Melech, he uh, threw lots. Right, we did this last lesson. We talked about the lots. Haman says to the king, We talked about this also. This uh, this pasuk, okay, about the the anti semitism. Welcome. Welcome. Um, so now we're going on to the next. You got your video as we go on to the next verse of the of, of the, the Chiddush in this year. If it pleases the king, it shall be written Le Abdam. Now our whole lesson is gonna go around this this uh, this verse, this word, Le Abdam. Not our whole lesson, the first half of our lesson. The Seret Alafim Kikal Kesef. Eshkol al yede osei and ten thousand, uh, how do you say kikar loaves of of silver? Is that what he say? I mean, uh, that's the bars of silver. Of bars, of bars of silver. I will um, eshkol. I will I will give. I will give over al yede osei in the hands of the people who do the job. Lahavir ginzei amelech to bring to the king's um, treasures, treasury, treasury, treasury. The king takes off his, his ring. And immediately gives him the ring. And this is a, is a word we're going to have to see. The money is given to you. What money? What money is given to him? Silver. No, what Haman wanted to give the king the silver. Okay, how does it translate it by you guys in 11? Uh, verse 11. Where? Which part? Ver- 3 11. Um, uh, Esther 3 11. Um, uh, the silver is given to you. People also to do with as you see fit. Right. So the, the silver is given to you, and the people, as it seems, so it seems like the king sort of gives up on the money, right? That's what he said. He said, I'm going to give you 10,000 loaves of silver. And he says, no, 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 the money is for you, it's fine. And to do whatever you want, be'enecha. And the rest of the psukim, that, well, I'm just going to read them because they're a little important as we, as we understand. Um, the, 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 the scribes of the king are called. And the first month, now this is important, the 13th day of the third month, of the, of the first month. Which day is that? It's Yud Gimel Nisan. Where does that play into Pesach? That's the day before Pesach. It's the yeah. day before Pesach. Uh, yeah. Pesach is Yud Dalid, right? We already, in, in the afternoon of Yud Dalid, we're already bringing the Korban Pesach. So this story, the story of Purim, happens on Pesach. Wow. Right. Just interesting to know. Right? And it's actually important laughter because we're going to see they're going to fast. We talked about this. They're going to fast on Pesach. That's going to be next chapter. We um, katev and it was written just as everything Aman said to the Achashtal Pane Amelech, Vela Pachot, Asher al Medina Medina, Vela Sare Am Vam Vinya Vidak Hichtava Vam Vam Kilshono. He writes to the heads of all the nations in the name of the King Achashverosh. It is written and sealed in the seal of the king, on the, on the ring of the king. And Vinishloch Sfarim, I just realized this, this, this point. He sends something to the heads of state. And then he also sends books. Right? So it's not just to kill, annihilate, and destroy all the Jews from, the, from young to old, from women and children, children and women, on one day, on the 13th day of the 12th month, which means exactly 11 months from that day, which is the Chodesh Adar. And to take their their um, the, the money, Pachegen Aktav. We don't even know what in the world that is. Pachegen Aktav. 
we don't know what the word Pachegin means, right? Sipur Aktav, Rashi says, the, the written, the story that is written. Um, Pachegin Aktav, Lina, what is, how is it translated by you? It says copies of the document. Copies of the document. Okay. Mm -hmm. To give in, to give as the law in every state, open to all the nations, to be ready for this day. The runners ran out, and the, the, the law was given in Shushan, and the king and Haman sat to drink, and the city of Shushan was Nabocha. The word Nabocha. Well, how is it translated by you guys? Bewildered. 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 Yeah. Bewildered. Navoch. Okay. Okay. So, so so let's go back for a minute. Now we'll go back to what, what Haman talks to the king. What did Haman say he wants to do to this nation? Just the pshat. What, did he want, what does he say? Go back to verse 9. After he tells them how horrible the Jews are, that's what we dealt with last lesson, what does he want to do to them? Yikatev le abdam, Right? Maybe it's a stroke. That's a translation. Um, but look at look when when the when the things go out, look at, at verse 13. The books are sent out by the runners. Lashmid Laharog Uleabed. So it seems like he only asked the king Labdam. But really it came out to destroy and kill. Ule Abdam. Is there another way of reading the Abdam, which um, may make us understand that Haman said one thing to the king, and in the decree put out a whole different thing? Let me just say how that idea may help us explain another event that happens not so much later, three days from now, if we say this all happens in three days, as Chazal explained to us, and it really could very well be, that everything now happens. Kings comes to Esther, Esther fasts, the key goes to the king, the parties are day after day. We're talking about a four to five day period, this whole story, the whole story of Purim, until Haman is, is hung. When the king goes, who wants to destroy all the people? Who wants to kill all these people? All these people? How could this be? Right when, when, when Esther says, you know, Haman, there, there's someone who wants to destroy all my people. He's like, who, what, where? And we're all like, yeah, 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 yeah. That's a nice act. You're, you don't know who it is. You just signed the thing a, a couple days ago. Well, I mean, he, he probably didn't know because he, he didn't know that she was Jewish. Okay. I understand. But he also says about the nation, he should sort of put the one and one together. He should understand what's happening. He just signed a, a death warrant for a whole nation five days ago. So let's take a look he at the Malbim. The Malbim is going to say, and then I'm going to give another play on that, someone else. But the Malbim is going to say here a unique and fascinating thing that I don't think most people do not understand here in the Megillah at all. That Haman's offer to the king, when he spoke to the king, he didn't want to kill the people. It, it was not to kill the Jewish people. It's amazing. Let's take a look at the Malbim, okay? So the Malbim says like this. You don't have it in front of you, but I'll read it to you, okay? I'm sorry I didn't prepare at all. Um, okay, Rabbi. Okay, he says like this. V'im. He says, this is the second thing that he stole the king's heart with. The first one was all the Lashon Hara he said before. Said though, um, and not saying which nation it is. He says, Shelo amarlo lashmidam. He didn't say he wants to destroy them. Rak le'abdam. She'pashtut biuro, the, the pshat of what le'abdam is, le'abed tzurat to destroy the religion. To make them, to force them to be like everyone else. When you sort of think what Haman was saying before, right? They're different. They're not doing what the king says. Okay. So now, just flip it around to the next pasuk. Let's destroy the shape of the religion and then they'll be like everyone else. Okay? Or things like this. To, 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 to end the, the form of the nation. But to kill the people? didn't think at all. 
the people. He wanted to kill their spirits. He wanted to ruin their uniqueness as a people. Mm-hmm. Where is this coming from? <laughs> because I mean, like, uh, from, from what we read in the... It's the, amazing, right? I mean, it's an amazing parish. It's, it's two very, it sounds opposing ideas. Like in, in, the, in, in the Megillah, it says quite clearly, you know, uh, let it be written uh, that they may be destroyed. As in, sign a decree, destroy them. So... That's the question. It says le'abdam. The word le'abdam is an interesting word. Le'abdam. And we see right after is lashmidu laharog. When you want to be very powerful in your, in your wording, lashmid is to destroy. Laharog is to kill. La'abed is to lose. That's what it means. To lose. Yeah. Like an aveda. Like shashashavat aveda. Is to lose. So le abdam is to lose them. Like lose them or, um... no, lose like the, the to lose it. I lost like, something. Uh-huh. I lost like hashavat uh, aveda to return a, a lost object is hashavat aveda, right? The mitzvah. Let them be destroyed. That's what literally. That's what he's literally saying. Uh, I'm saying the word le abdam. We automatically translate it that way. Not only that, it says afterwards lashmid la rogul abed in the decree itself. So you could say you know it's just like the other ones, but on the other hand. It wasn't this, and, and just I'm just thinking. The, okay, I'm, I'm reading Malbim. I'm not making this up. Okay, this is the Malbim saying this. Uh, where is this coming from? Is what my so, so again, the, I, I said already. I said before Sorry. that when the king suddenly is so surprised when Esther says there's this guy who wants to kill his, her nation, and he's like, "Huh? What?" So what? He's, he, this was five days before that. Okay, like what, he, he didn't remember, he was drunk, like what's going on here? He doesn't know what she's talking about. But if you explain this, and you say, he, he said, what? I didn't say to kill a He remembers exactly what happens. He's like, what? Someone wrote to kill the people? I didn't say to kill the people. I said to kill the religion, or to knock off the religion. Now just let me, <laughs> you guys, it's good. I like the faces here. First of all, it changes like the whole story in a sense. So I'll give you, let me, let me just, before, before, before I continue. Because he basically twisted his word without permission. Exactly. So that's, Haman, that's part of why I get so mad. Haman's goal also to just, he had an issue with their uniqueness. No, but Haman wants to kill them all. Ashmid la rogue. This was five days before, because it says that what Esther wrote, said to, back to Mordecai, the, that, that the king wasn't um, allowing people to come in. That she that she wasn't called in to the meet the king for thirty days beforehand. When right. when she talks to him beforehand. No, when she talks. To that him. has nothing to do with what's going on with Haman. There, there's the decree. I mean, again, we, it's not clear how long it takes from now on. The dates are off from now on. Where the next date we're going to get is Sivan. Okay, three months hence. Um, so we're not sure if this is day by day, but and we know the three days that, that she fasts. So there, there's a little story. According to Chazal, it all happens within the next three days. The whole story happens in, in four days. Okay. okay, we'll see in a second. But let, let, I'm going to go, I'm going I'm to I'm stop for a second and, and, and retract and sit, show how there's definitely Chazal. This is not mainstream, what the Malbim is saying. So the Malbim are trying to say that the Akashverus doesn't really... He's a bit oblivious. In yeah, going not on. only oblivious, he doesn't know. Not only that, he, basically the Malbim is going to say he's even a good king. The Malbim, that, that there's no way yeah. that a king would do something like this. Yeah, no. I always had a problem like, why would you say Akhenaten is a bad king when honestly he's not that bad? Well, like good, so you like the Malbim that we'll see in a second. Well, in a way, in a way it's worse to destroy the spirit of the Jews. Um, worse than to kill them? Because the, they, 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 you can see in history they did Yarug Vad Yavor. Okay. So in some sense, uh, it's also, in some it's, aspects, there, there's Chazal say, Gadol HaMachti'o Mi'arugo. Worse is one who causes someone to sin than who you kill it, than killing it. Which is like a, 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 a crazy statement, right? Which is what, uh, what Nisim is saying. You know, there's something about destroying your spirit which may be just as bad as that. But it seems like it's not intended at the Jews per se. Okay, no, he doesn't, it wasn't like Hashverosh learned the Jewish because, oh, I hate it's, it's these Jew spirits. The, the, the potential threat. Sorry. Exactly, the potential threat of, the, of, of what comes from their being different, that comes from their holding out. You want to say? It's it also playing on the sound of the slave, not of them. So, so, unfortunately, it's not an ayin. If it was an ayin, then we would definitely. But 
the, the other sheet I'm going to say here, as opposed to this, it goes in that. that that's what he wanted to say. Um, yeah, that, that, that he wanted to enslave them. That's really what uh, Rabbi Yoni Grossman says. That's how he explains this, this story. But uh, going on the, on the Kav Machshav of the, of the of Malbim, continuing the Malbim's thought. But one second, before I do that, I, wanna, I have to say, you have to say the famous Chazal Mashal, which said, Achashverosh wanted to kill the Jews just, just as much. And they bring a famous uh, Mashal. There are two people. Yeah, I heard this. With the, with the mountain of the two. I, I was taught like really strongly that Achishverosh doesn't always seem as innocent as he's portrayed. I've seen this, the uh, side, uh, I've seen the perspective of how really he can be even worse than Homer. I uh, definitely and and one and I'll say the, the mashal here. The mashal Chazal say there are two guys. One guy, two guys, two neighbors who have uh, fields. One guy has a very large mound of dirt or rocks in his field, and one guy has a hole in his field. And one day, the guy with the big mound of rocks um, goes over to, the guy, to his neighbor and says, listen, um, do you want to buy a mound of rocks? And the guy says, you know what? I have a hole in my field. You have uh, a mound in your field. You give me your mound. It will fill my hole and we'll be even. We'll be perfect. That's the mashal they bring. We both have a problem. Haman has a problem. Achashverosh has a problem. We both have problems with the Jews. You give me this, I do this, I'll give you my ring, you give me the money, we'll both solve it. In that view, Chazal, as we have, what, what Yosef was saying, Achashverosh hated the Jews just as much as Haman. He knows exactly what's going on here, and it's, they know exactly what they're doing. That's sort of the basic story that we know, right? In a sense, sort of, you know, Achashverosh is pretty bad. He pretty much knows what's happening. Again. Know how the heck that works. Well, good. So now, so now, hold on to the Malbim. So let's hold on to the Malbim, who really says otherwise. The Malbim really says otherwise. So let's, I'm just going to read you another another word from the Malbim. Okay. Um, so he says here. Now he says, "What's the money? The mo how is the money getting?" Then he says, "What's these ten thousand? He says, "Don't worry, people will pay you." Says says Haman to the king, "People will pay you." to do this. People hate these Jews so much. It doesn't say Jews. They hate them so much that you, instead of having to pay them to knock out the religion, they'll pay you to knock out the religion. It's sort of like a, a guzma. You don't have to give them. You don't have to pay for this. Don't worry, king. People, exactly. Everyone will love to do this because this nation is so upsetting, is so different, is so um, in, in your face, is so... Uh, what? You're right. They're an eyesore. Then people will even volunteer to do this for you. Well, then he says later, like, they give you the silver, and and the, like the people on your hand. You and then he said, and and then he would be saying, if not he says, I don't need it. They don't have to pay me. Just knock out the religion. That's what he's saying. Oh, I guess if not I don't. I don't need it. Don't keep the keep the silver. I don't need anything. Just oh. knock out the religion. Okay. Um. So he gets now in Pasuk Yud Aleph, right? Hakesef Natun Lach. He says, "Mevaer Sheni." I'm just reading the Malbi how, how he really presses it in. Mevaer Sheni Tumat Amelech. The, the king is really Tamim. He's he's a good guy. He is is pure. He says, "I don't even want the money. No, I just want to straighten out these people and get rid of the evil of their their thought and religion and their ways." The king is a good guy. He hears about this horrible nation who has very bad midot, has bad actions. He says, listen, let's fix them. It's, it's, it's amazing. <laughs> right? <laughs> and, and look, look, I'm just reading it. It's just, it's just, it's just so powerful to read him. What does he bring <laughs> As it is the straight and the good way to take away a block, a stumbling block that comes from their evil ways, latov lahem, because it's good for them to do this. The king Ashkeshvosh is a good guy. He wants to help these poor people that Haman portrayed as misguided and doing the wrong things. Never in the history of all history have I ever heard of any king of Persia being. Portrayed as a good guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, called Daryavesh. What do you mean? Daryavesh, Koresh, both of them were good guys. At first, Koresh and Daryavesh uh, the whole way guy, through. Okay, again, most of them were good. Dafka Hashverosh is the only one who's really bad, bad. 
other ones we all have, at Tachshasta, all of them seem to be actually not so bad to the Jews. As opposed to the Babylonians, Koresh says they can rebuild Beit HaMikdash, Daryavish allows it to be rebuilt again, the, the Persian, and, and the Galut, the, the, it was a good Galut for the Jews, except this. The exile was good for the Jews, except this one. And just one more thing, okay? The last thing that he says here, he says, if it was in his knowledge, the king's knowledge, to give a command to destroy a whole nation, how in the world could he sit down and drink afterwards? Right at the end of the chapter, it says, the king and Haman sat down to drink, and the, and the city of Shushan was confused. At the very end of the chapter, the last passage. He said, how in the world would he be able to sit down and drink? Hare, we know that any shofet, any judge who, go, who deals with um, dinei nefashot, who deals with... Uh, with, uh, with um, Corporal law, what's it called when you, when you kill someone? You have to, when someone's, uh, the, the, the death sentence. Mm -hmm. When you, when any, any capital law, what, capital, yeah. capital punishment, whatever. When, whenever a judge does that, you, you know you don't drink, you don't eat, it's a serious thing. And now he's going to do a whole nation and sit and drink? No way. Yeah. Also, from no way. From point of view, he's essentially going to war. Like, no commander goes to war. You know, sitting and drinking and having a good time. Exactly. Right. So, so, so this, is, this, is how, this is how the Malbim really portrays it. And then he goes on and explains. I'm going to read this outside instead of what he says inside. He says like this. The Malbim, remember we taught when we just read, now as we read it, there were like different books being sent. There are books sent to the heads and there's books sent to the people. He says like this. This is how the Malbim says. This part I don't like that much. The, the other part is fascinating in my mind. Just as a reading, a new reading of the Megillah. Yeah. But what he says, he says it was a trick. Haman sent out sealed letters, sealed letters, to all the heads of state and said, you open it on the 13th of Adar. Mm -hmm. And he sent out a letter to everyone saying, there is going to be on the 13th day of 13th day, no, there, there will be a war. Who, what? Sealed until the 13th of Adar. Why did he do that? So that the Jews won't be able to lobby to save themselves. So open it up, say, oh, we have a command on the 13th. Boom, and fight. And that's why there are two books sent. There's the first book sent to the leaders, and then there is the things to liot galui lechol haamim liot atidim layom azeh to be prepared for this day. For what to happen? They don't know what to happen. It's going to be a surprise. So how do the Jews know? Oh, how do the Jews know? I'll read it to you. One second. Umor dechai, yoshev b'shamayim yishak. This is the first pasuk of the next thing. Umor dechai, yadat kol asher nasa. Vayikam or dechai et begadav. Vayivazak vayefer. Vayetzei betoch ha'ir. Vayizak zaka gdola ubara. Okay. Mordechai yada et kol asher nasa. Mordechai knew everything that happened. How does he know everything that happens? And now, according to the Malbim, there are secrets upon secrets upon secrets going on here. Haman's tricking the king. Haman's sending out letters that only no one knows what they're about. How does he know? So the Malbim has to answer this question. Oh, you guys are too in. You're in this lesson too long. You're, you've been in my shirim too long. What? There you go. Thank you. Some religious kid here sitting here giving me a good, uh, good reason. Politics. What is this? No, 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 no. Don't go too far. Okay. He goes to Mordechai. The Malbim says, Mordechai, Yoshev Bashamai Mishak. He who sits in heaven laughs. At what we do down here, right? All of Haman's plotting to keep it secret. That's how he knows. Hashem revealed it to him. 
How? I don't know exactly how. He doesn't explain exactly how. Hashkachat Hashem. There is a divine interference here, a divine uh, um, intervention, which somehow allows Mordechai. We don't care how. It's not, the, the point here isn't here. Guys, I've convinced you guys too much to read it in a different <laughs> way. Um, no, so the Malbim, even though the Malbim here is explaining an interesting pshat in the Torah itself, um, this is what he says. But now I just want to show you, I want to, I want to say what, 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 um, how to explain interesting, interest, another interesting pasuk here. Okay? Let's go ahead in a second. Um, to Mordechai then tells her to the Jews. To, 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 right, and Mordechai, Prophet, Mordechai lets it out to everyone. Yeah, no, when we get it, so to everyone. He goes straight to the middle of the streets and cries. Exactly. And cries out loud. Okay, but look what he does. When he tells he Esther, look. Whistles, what? He blows the whistle, oh, for Esther, sure. He lets, the, he lets the secret out. So That's what he does. When, he told, when it says he told Esther this, it basically means that Esther didn't know what was going on. Oh, for and sure. It was new to her. That's why I said... He told her, you need to go do this because this is going to happen. Right. Very good. Very good. That's what or it is. Or Esther would probably have probably done it by herself if she knew what was going on, maybe. May maybe. Well, one second. We'll get to chapter four. We'll say where exactly Esther is. She's not exactly. She needs a little a little straightening up by her uncle before that happens. But let's just take a look. Just, just to understand this part, look at chapter 7. Look. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, he, he, pretty, he, he gives her a couple slaps in like, both ways. Um, no, but he, he, he says, listen, if you don't do this, don't think you can hide. It's metaphorical slaps. It's metaphorical. It's a, it's the, no, it's really theological slaps. It's theological. It's real theological slaps. We'll see that, I hope, in this lesson. Even. But let's just jump ahead to chapter 4, 7, just to sh prove the Malbim's point here a little more. Okay? So, Vayaged lo Mordechai. Now, this, now, Esther hears that Mordechai is out there, and she sends out a, an emissary to see what's going on. We'll talk about that as we get there. And... And Mordechai tells this guy to tell Esther three things. Look at, look at, look at verse 7. Look, we are very carefully at verse 7. Vayeged lo Mordechai et kol asher karahu. Here the Malbim says, between him and Haman, okay, what happened in between them. Ve'et parshat kesef asher amar Haman lishkol al ginze amelech vayehudim le'abdam. And the money that he wanted to give them the king, the Abdam, remember that word, that word. Ve, three things he gives this. He says, first I want to tell you what happened, Asher Karahu, what happened to me and Haman. Now I want to tell you what happened to Haman and the king. And now I'm giving you the decree that was sent out. Ve pachegen ktavadat asher nitan beshushan lehashmidam natan lo he says, he gives, he tells her about what happened within the king, in, in, the, in the chamber with just Haman and, and the king, what Haman told the king. And he gives him the decree somehow. So he, Mordechai got his hands. This, hands. Is, this is how he got them from, like... Um... Somehow, maybe he contacts the one region. For sure. He gets those letters. The letter that says, not Le'abdam, but Le'ashmidam, to destroy them. He says, take this to the king. You don't understand, Esther, that taking this to the king will wake him up because he didn't agree to this. Otherwise, oh, otherwise, I'm just saying, th this, this pasuk is really powerful to explain this way because otherwise, why does he tell her about the parsha of the money? Who cares about the parsha of the money that he wanted to give, that he didn't give, the 10,000 silver? What does that matter? What does he have to tell this to Esther for? It has nothing to do with anything. Because they, they made a trade. They made a bargain. And I, you know, but why does he have to tell Esther? He just has to give her the, the pachegin, the thing, that, the, the decree, right, that says that the Jews are in danger. Because maybe Ahasuerus doesn't really care that... Uh... The Jews are in danger. What, what what he cares is that Haman broke his contract. Uh, he, he's, but why did he break his contract he, if the king? Unless we. Oh, right. Exactly. Yes. That's that's what I'm saying. For that, Esther, that's, to that's, tell what, the king. Exactly. That's that's what uh, Mordechai wants Esther to, to put. Exactly. Haman's made a fool of the king. Right. That, that's what the Malbim says. That's how Malbim explains this sentence of Mordechai. That I must say, 
Anyone else? It's not such an easy explanation how to explain this Pasuk. That Pasuk, Pasuk Zayin, in, in this. It's not clear why he needs the three different things that he brings to her. Okay? So, so I just want to explain that, that Rav Yoni Grossman continues in the, in the Malbin's footsteps. And he just says, though, that Haman fooled him that he wants to sell them for slaves. Le'abdam is, is slavery, like you were saying. That instead change, uh, destroy the religion as slavery. And that one, there's, there's a hint to that because when Esther goes before the king, when the king comes to Esther's party, the second party, listen to what she says to him. Okay, go to ch- the, uh, 7, chapter 7. I think, still working, only one I think I'm convincing you guys, right? Something's happening here. Yeah. Seder. Okay. Just know it's not mainstream perush, this perush, okay? Mamash not. Even Chazal, we said, is, that's not what they say. Um, so uh, so in, in chapter 7, right, he comes to the second party. Chapter 7, what? Chapter 7, 4. Okay? 7-4. So this Esther now fi- finally fighting. K- Kinim Karan, right. So, so she's finally saying. She's saying what really, what, what, her, her bekasha, right? She pushed him off each time. He asked her what she wants. You want to go to a party? Yes, at the party, what do you want? I want to come to another party. Now he's, she's finally saying what she wants. Kinim Karnu, listen, listen to this word. We were sold. She made a party within one day? No, it's, it's day after day. Right, but she set up a party in one day. She was very capable. She was I, very good. She could I throw the. Think a king. She, she could throw the best part. It's just for Achashverosh and Ben Haman. It's two people. Two people. It's a, it's a mini, mini party. After party. It's a little party. They're just having, you know. Hey, no, no, no. She's a queen. She has connections in the kitchen. She's good. A party is a lot of people. I'm sorry. It was a mishte for a personal mishte. We'll see that. That's part of it. There's so much to talk about. Well, let's just, let's just see verse 7 here, okay? So what happens? We've been sold. Oh, right. Those are the wording. Me and my people. Lashnid, laharog, uleabed. Not labed. Lashnid, laharog, uleabed. Listen to this sentence. The ilu leavadim ulishfachot nimkarnu hecherashti. If we would have just been sold as slaves, I would have been quiet. Ki en atzar shove. Again, the same word. Shove benezek amelech. That I wouldn't bother the king if we were just sold for slaves. I, that you're, you're much more important than I wouldn't have bothered you. But we're not sold as slaves. We were sold to be killed. And then the king goes, Whoa! Who is this? And who wanted to do such a thing? Right? Because what? That is, that's the point they said in the beginning. Like, what? He's so surprised. He just he sang the signed an edict. What's he so so? So the Malbim and Ravioni Grossman explain he really was surprised. Yeah. He did not give this uh, 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 issue. He did not allow this to happen. You know, when he asked me, though, he may know who me who is. You know, he may really have understood. As even as he's he's getting so mad. He may go, oh my gosh, that is not what I said. So Yoni Grossman's, expl- Yoni Grossman's explanation of saying that they were sold as slaves fits well into this. And she's hinting to him, you know, if it was just slaves, it would be fine. And then he says, you know, it was just slaves. That's what I signed. One second. That's what I signed off, not what I signed. That's what I signed off on. Haman, did you change the edict? So did he see the edict and see what that... No, so you know? the king didn't see the... Yeah, he gave him the, the insignia to go through all the contract and yeah. send it off. Do what you like, basically. That's what he said. He just didn't read it. Do what you please. Yeah, he... Haman was this kid, was the king's uh, most trusted person. The only number trusted one. person, not the one, number one and number two and number a hundred. There's only one person. It's just Haman. He is his whole job was He's to protect right the king. The king's left hand. Right, and his feet too. He was everything for the king, and 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 the, he he trusts him completely. But what happens in between? We'll see how Esther knocks off his trust. Really, what Esther does in her plan. That we'll see in the next chapters is how she 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 shoots his trust down on Haman. So that was the end of chapter four. An interesting, fascinating reading. A new light on Achashverosh. It will explain possibly why he doesn't have to say the nation's name. 
why it's not such a uh, 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 such an important part of of the of the thing when it's not against the Jews per se. All this helps to un understand the end of chapter three and possibly the continuation. Um, but now let's see Mordechai's reaction. Let's go on to chapter four. Um, also, I just may say. The, remember, we had the, the, the last words in chapter 3 are the, the city of, 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 of Shushan were bewildered. bewildered. They get this letter that says, be prepared for a war, but you don't know what, against who? Huh? There is, it's very strange, bewildering what's happening here. So there's going to be, according to the Malbim, that's exactly how he explains. You know, they knew, be prepared. For, so, for what? For who? For who? Uh, there's going to be a war on the 13th of Adar against who? Surprise. So that's what, so it wasn't just the Jews being bewildered, but also the non-Jews. Very well. good. That's what it and seems to be. And the like. officers and all the soldiers, like they had no clue what the hell was happening. Right. They were basically being told, get ready for a secret um, sneak attack. Not a secret one. Right. A not secret one, but, a, but an attack that you don't know who the who you're attacking. Right. Until you get the thing. Correct. Or neither do they know. Right. So that and explains. Like, okay, the word Navocha is a very weird, and it should have been the ear Shushan. Avela, which is is mourning in mourning, right? What is it? What's the confusion happening here? What's the navoch mean? So all this um, is an interesting reading in the thing. Again, we could uh, the Malbim is definitely kedai to the to to uh, accept his perush. It's a, it's a fascinating and interesting perush. Again, I will also say the Gra, who came actually before the Malbim also says something very much like this. So really, I mean, you guys, looking at this page I have before me, right, reading the Mikrot Gdolot of, uh, of Esther, so I have the Gra and the Malbim, two Perushim here, the Gra also says the same thing. The Gra also says that Haman fooled the king and that he, it was, he didn't say the same thing and he didn't know. The Gra said that the king was a good guy. Ha, huh, not that far. But he did say he didn't know. Okay, he did say he didn't know. Mamash. In fact, if you contrast it with um, uh, Vashti, it's also clear the difference that, well, in Vashti, it appears that the king is the one who's commanding what is written and what is being sent out. Vait, as you said, Vaitava Dava, right? Yeah, That's yeah. what you said before. That the king says it's, it was good in his eyes. It doesn't say that here. No. He doesn't know what's written in the edict. He doesn't really know. He only knows they sit and drink. Because the king thinks, according to the Malbim, the king thinks he's doing a wonderful thing, right? He's doing a great job. He's helping these people, right? He said the Malbim, the tov lahem. It's good for them, what he's doing. Beseder. Okay. So let us leave after too many lessons on chapter 3. Let us move ahead to chapter 4. Yeah. saying told me one shim, and told me twice shim, and you kind of placed the hum on here. Told me once, you tried to trick me into like, like you tried to trick me that these people were bad and everything and all and all this and that they were really up to destroy me, but really they're not. Told me twice, you decided to sign a contract that said that you could destroy them without me knowing. Good luck. Not well, good luck. well, he only finds he fools him twice. He does fool him twice, but right. right. But after that, he's already. Right. But the second time, he's like, yeah. No. Bye. No. But that will happen after the third time where Haman wants to kill Mordechai. That's where it's going. That's when. It, that's when it's going to flip. When Haman comes to asking to kill more, we'll get to that after. Yeah. Doesn't Esaf say something like that to his father? Uh, that Yaakov fooled him twice? Yeah. Yes, yes. But, yeah, sorry. Okay, okay. I'm sad. I'm sad. I'm sad. I mean, but there is the, the, the fooling someone there, Yaakov fools his father in that story. In other words, if you're looking for people who are fooling, that's, it is an interesting uh, relationship. So let's let's go let's continue in chapter four. Oh, so we already read verse one, right? Mordechai knew everything that happened, and he rips his is is. Yeah, going back to chapter four. So let's let's uh, someone read me chapter four. We're going to read the whole chapter, okay? Um, as we are wont to do, let's do it the way we should. Everyone read the chapter, and we'll have the questions, okay? So let's go to chapter three. It's been so long since we were in chapter three, but we're moving on to chapter four. Let's take our time. Um, does it help you guys when I read in Hebrew at all or not? No. no? It's, it's nice yes. to know that it feels like it's coming from a chaf. <laughs> from the source. Oh. Um, so yeah, so you, read it, you guys read it, read it, read it in English. Okay, take it. Take a, a couple minutes to read it. Everyone, uh, 
as you guys are getting sharper and sharper here at reading, see what's going on here in chapter four, okay? Ezra, you got your reading there? Mm -hmm. Great. I'm sorry, what's your name? Nicholas. Nicholas. You okay? You are dive right in? You all right? Yes, Great, okay. So we're reading it, and then as you read the chapter, I'm going to sort of like think about the chapter. As you read it, like what's happening, notice things that are interesting, ask questions that are this, and at the end we will ask, everyone will bring like one thing that's the most important thing that they noticed or have a question about in the chapter, okay? So, because... Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, we're going to hear you in a second, Ezra. Good. Hmm? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> Not how wrong you are, but this, uh, this chapter flips the script. We good? Nicholas, you okay? Almost finished. I'll give another couple of seconds. Then we'll go on. I don't have so many questions for this one. All right. This is like an easy chapter, right? Yeah, this yeah. So we'll see how long we get stuck on this easy chapter. <laughs> Some of that. This might be his. His rough uh, looking at his watch. Thinking, I might go home early. Tonight. <laughs> no, no. I don't think we're going home early tonight. But I agree. There, there are, in a sense, the first three chapters set up the whole book in a way that afterwards they move ahead in a different, in a different. Uh, well, like the, the first chapter is a massive pace. Uh, uh, backstory. No, I'm saying the, the prologue, and they're they're actually each prologue is really until chapter three, mm. and then chapter three is a prologue to understand who Haman is. Where we we talked about how the, each chapter presents the 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 the, the, dmuyot, the, the characters. Achashverosh, Mordechai, and Esther, and then Haman, and so now that you have who they are, now they're all going together into the plot. Okay. So they all mix. The chapter that we just read, it feels more like just back and forth dialogue. Oh, a lot of it is back and forth. I don't feel like there's much to go in depth with it. Okay. Well, we'll see what there is to do. Tov. Yalla, let's give this a shot, okay? Um, Yosef, you want to start us off with a uh, insight question? Anything that uh, might stand out, maybe, <laughs> is that Esther goes from, uh, she goes from what's happening, uh, are you sure I should go into the king's uh, palace, to, all right, guys, it's serious, everyone, go fast for me. Three days, nights, no drinking. You know, she goes from zero to a hundred very quickly. <laughs> from like, uh, from, you know, maybe, yes, maybe not, to uh, suddenly, boom, for serious, right? Three days of fast. By the way, she goes in. Is she when she goes to the king? Is she fasting? She, she does it. Her, she she was fasting herself. Yeah, when three days. Gama niven alotaya sechen. Me and my my maid servants will do so. Three days of a fast, and she goes into the, before the king. It's very interesting. Is that is that a smart thing to do? To go into the king when you're in the third day of fast? It's interesting. How how pretty can you look? Three um, days of yeah, fast. See, you look um, very hungry. You probably look weak Feeble. and everything and Feeble. all. Yeah. Is that a key? Is that a not a key? Tired. One's important number is tired. Okay, so I'm just, I'm just, it's just a fascinating thing. Good. Bring it up. That's towards the end of the parak. When we get there, we'll see. Yeah, Ezra, go on. So it says that in all of the king's provinces and everything. Does that mean any Jews are living in Baba or outside of the king's provinces was, um, was... What, 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 um, like they were protected or something from the from this decree. Why? Because it says um, all the Jews that are in the king's provinces. Where where are we talking about? I think this was when they hear when they hear the decree, right? Mm -hmm. um, so why why isn't uh, it why the why not? And all the people of the king's provinces know that any man or woman who brushes. Oh, no, the whole Meduan, wherever wherever there are Jews, there. They're crying. Is this a different no. chapter? So no, this is, is the same chapter. There's about verse three. Oh, verse three. Why not? Why not? Why not? Uh, no. Wait, why not? Why would you say not? I'm, I'm trying to think of the. It, yeah, it's everywhere. Everywhere there are Jews. Okay. Yeah. There are Jews everywhere. And Jews were everywhere, according to Haman, at least. The whole Medinos Malchutecha, Nachon. Tov, David. Um. So, let's see his name. Sorry. Very quick. Chatach. What happens to him? Oh, so great! One to one conversation, and then suddenly we go to day. Uh, to wow! Vayagidu, uh, Vayagidu, yeah. right? Yeah. What happened to Hatach? That's a, a great question. The pshat. Now, the, the answer is mind-boggling. But Hatach is the messenger, the emissary between Esther and Ham, uh, Esther and Mordechai. He goes back and forth, and suddenly he disappears. And look at look at verse thirteen, right? If I remember correctly, uh, verse twelve. So, so it says it says that Hatach's going back and forth, like uh, verse uh, nine. Hatach comes and he says to Esther what Mordechai says, and then verse ten, Esther says to Hatach to go to Mordechai, and then when you get to verse twelve, it says Vayagidu, and they said to Mordechai, 
Who is they? Where did Hatach disappear to? What's going on? Where did he disappear to? And now Mordechai answers, and, he, and it's also Hatach's not there anymore. Right? By Omer Mordechai Lahashiv El Esther. By who? Why didn't he say, By Omer Mordechai Lehatach? Just like it said before. Where did he go, this Hatach guy? Just an interesting question. Maybe they got fed up of writing and Hatach. No? Maybe he's just walking back and forth. <laughs> Maybe Hatach got fed up with going back and forth. He said, Go find someone else. So, Nicholas, anything to help us out here? Uh, nothing. Right? Nope. Goodbye. So inside, something you noticed. <laughs> okay, that's fine. That's fine. David. So, um, no question, but um, so uh, we discussed like several shearing before we discussed the um, possibility that um, Mordechai kind of um, planned to set Esther into like to get him into the. Um, After she was cho- taken, yeah. Yeah. Right. So, like in here, he says um, later, um, "Don't think that you're gonna like save yourself when you're like close the chamber, but they will come for you too, basically." And off, only after that, she is going to uh, try to like help something. Like, yeah, like she's, she's she's going too fast. Before that, she's like trying to wiggle herself out of the situation. Like, I don't know what I can do. And then, what do I apparently had to? As you said, Rob, metaphorically, <laughs> like you're also stuck in this. And um, yeah, so no question, but the interesting insight, like that, apparently, like as he says here. Um, mm-hmm. And who knows whether it was just for such a time that this that you attained the royal, royal position, like kind of like I set you in this position, so now do what you are like supposed to do. <laughs> Oh, yes. that, that, that's the heart of the chapter, what the view is saying. That's the heart of the chapter. That move that you see suddenly, he, he gets through to Esther. Right? Yeah. Esther seems like she's not, not getting through, not getting through, not getting through, and then boom. And right after that, as you said, she flips, go, go fast. Da, da, da. And just to, just to start, just to, we start at the very, very, very end of the chapter, just to see how it flipped, look what it says in verse 17. Vayavor Mordechai. It's interesting between Vayavor, what it means, where is Vayavor. But Vayas Kechol Asher Tzivta Alav Esther. He does and does everything that Esther commanded him. Do you know what it said until now? That Esther did everything Mordechai commanded her. Up until now, she didn't say her nation as Mordechai commanded her, as Mordechai commanded her. Flip! We flipped. More, Esther's in control now. Okay, it's, gonna, it's a huge nafochu happening. And now, Esther, from now on, Esther's going to be super active. She's going to be the one calling the shots. She's going to be the one leading it. But this chapter is where it flips. And let's see, the flip is really important to understand the heart of the Megillah. Um, what David was saying, I don't know, maybe it's the terminology, the way it's saying it, this one, but uh, the way Mordechai seems to have said it to her is that uh, you may be in the palace uh, and may think that uh, it's got nothing to do with you, but uh, this will come to pass one way or another and the Jews will be saved, but it'll be where you find yourself standing. That, that's what it seems to be more in that sense. No, he's very, correct. Right. And he's saying that the Jews will be saved. Listen, we know the Jews will be saved. Hmm. You, on the other hand, are going to disappear if you don't do the right thing at the right, right. time. Well, you and your father's house will perish. Right. right, which is interesting. Who your father's house is yeah, as they sure. die. Is that him? Sort of an interesting question. Who, who's her father's house? Yeah. She's, she's an orphan. Yeah. Right? What's her yeah, father's yeah, house? Yeah, maybe she knew. Maybe he told her. Possibly, or, or maybe he's saying himself. Right? Is he his father's house? He's your he's uncle. Oh, okay. Okay, okay but let, let's, let's, so let's, uh, we'll get to the, that, that specific statement. First, it's important, to the first, the first okay. couple words. We're, we're going to go back to the beginning, the beginning. Okay? The, yeah, the beginning of chapter 4, not the beginning of the Megillah. Okay? So, Mordechai knows everything that happens. Now, let's, I, I'll leave the Malbim's Perush for now. I don't need the Malbim's Perush, okay? But even if we go with the Malbim's Perush, then Mordechai really knows the danger they're in now. Um, uh, let's, uh, let's leave the Malbim for now, okay? Let's go back to the classic understanding that this Xerah goes out, 
and everyone knows that the Jews are going to be destroyed in X and Y time. Okay? Well, when the Gezer goes out, you said it was two days before. Pesach, right? So. Yeah. Right, so, the, so it's going out. Like, it takes time. As we said, it takes time to get everywhere, right? And that's why, that's what verse uh, 3 that Ezra, was, uh, that Ezra was talking about. Mekom asher dvar ha-melech it, it takes time. Every time it got there, then they start complaining. But Mordechai is very interesting when he hears what happens. Mordechai hears what happens. And here comes the big question. And this is a, a major part of the Megillah. What do you do when you are a powerless minority in an empire and you were just got a decree that you were going to be destroyed? What do you do? Good. Okay, that's one thing. You flee. That's a possibility. You run away. Even though the problem is this is the whole known world, sort of. Run, hide, cry. It's pretty much Good. Fight. Or fight. Right. Or... Create a resistance. There you go. Okay. Or create a resistance. Yeah. So now there are two. There are two resistance that can be created. One is a military one. Not what the Jews are really good at, usually. Um... <laughs> The other is... So that's the idea. No, that's not resistance anymore. It's defense. That's our other nation. Um, one is resistance. and They could have tried to resist this. It doesn't seem the truth. The other is to try to form a political movement that will empower that position in the empire. This is what Mordechai is trying to do. Let's let's read this out. What he does. So you're saying is that he took this opportunity to gather the Jews. Not only the Jews. That's what I'm going to say. Not only the Jews. He now Mordechai again. We again. This is back to our usual perush of the Megillah. Mordechai. Um, he went to every province now. Mordechai. No, he doesn't go to every province, but he stays in Shushan Abira. But Mordechai hears this is happening. Secret, not secret. He hears this is happening. Do you? Sort of what Yosef said, flee, cry, or something else, hide. or hide. Do you see yourself, accept the situation that you're weak, understand there's no way I can win, and attempt to disappear one way or another? Or do you say, I understand how power works. I understand how politics work. I have to try flip the tide of power. Look what Mordechai does. Okay? He rips his clothes. He puts on sackcloth. But where does he go? This is very important. First, he goes out into the city. Ha'ir. Now, we don't know where the ear is. Is it Shushan Abira or Ha'ir Shushan? It doesn't say. It's sort of an in-between. It seems like he goes out in both. And he yells. No, it's really important to understand the yelling. He is not quiet. He doesn't go meekly. He doesn't hide. He goes and puts himself in front of every. No one can miss him. At the end, he's going to move ahead to the Shar Amelech. He goes right up to the gate. He can't go in. You're not allowed to go into the king's gate with, with, with sackcloth. But he's standing right at the gate. Meaning anyone. Anyone. One second, one second. We'll get to Esther in a second. This, this is why it's important. Usually people just flip over these psukim. He stands there right in front of the gate. Everyone going in to the king. Everyone going out to the king sees him. And he is yelling. Famous Chazal say that this is the punishment for Esav. Maybe connecting this uh, the thing. Right after Esav finds out that Yaakov stole his brachot, he zoek zakag umara. He yells a great, it's the same words. He yells a great yell. And Chazal say, because Yaakov caused him that yell, his children paid for it here. Mordechai has to. They're very, very careful. Chazal on, on. They do not give our forefathers 
a sliver of, uh, of, they don't give them anything. If you're not 100% right, they catch these things and they say, there's a problem here. In other words, which again, is the, one, the wonder of the, of the Tanakh in our, in our sense is how... Did Yaakov not yell in four? Because all like the critics of history. They're the critics of our, they're the critics of our greatest heroes to make sure we learn from everything that happens. Everything that they're always teaching. It's always a great man teaches through his successes and through his failures. And but he's still a great man. That's what's amazing about the Tanakh. In other words, as opposed to almost every other religion where the, the great man is perfect, by us, they're not perfect. And they're, they're human, but they are still our amazing, a great heroes, our wondrous wise men, and our avot, and our leaders. And, so and Jews, you got to be perfect and be a great man. The Jews, you can, be, you can do a lot of mistakes and still be perfect. It, 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 it's, that's right, in a sense. I don't know if you'd say perfect, but you could still be great. So that would be the statement. You could be great and not perfect. What did Yaakov not do that? Ya- Yaakov steals the brachot from Esav. And Esav yells, and he says, "Ah, he stole my brachot." He yells, really. He's like, it's like he screams. I didn't scream loud enough. He screams a lot louder. But it's using the same exact same term, which is Chazal immediately connect. But let's let's one second. Let's come back to our our perush here. Okay, so Mordechai goes out there, and he doesn't isn't silent in the state in in the, in the face of uh, a grossly unjust decree that comes out to kill all the Jews. And he says, I will not be quiet. And I won't let you and you and you just say, oh, it's so bad. <laughs> and go on and watch the soccer game. Right? Sort of like what's happening in Ukraine to some of us, right? Yeah, oh, so, so. Okay. So. Yeah. How's the weather to tomorrow? In other words, for three days and three nights. So they were the same well, what's going to happen soon? One second. Mord- Mordechai now the first thing he does, the first thing he does is go out. One second, one second, one second, one second, one second, guys. Mordechai, guys, Yosef. Mordechai goes out and he's not quiet. It's really, it's really the first thing that happens. What happens when injustice happens? Do you be quiet? Do you accept it? Or do you go out and yell? Even though you realize, you realize you may... At the, at the, you're on the you're on the underhand you're 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 the, you have the bottom hand you're not you're not powerful you're not you cannot allow this to happen and the first one second the first move to right an injustice is to speak it out is to say it is to not stay silent it's really important both in politics and in life that an un, unjust act the first part of of, of, of solving it is saying it the acceptance, the putting your head down, saying, you know, it's not, I, I didn't hear, I didn't know, it's uh That's the first part on the path of, of destruction, right? The famous, famous statement in the Nazis. Uh, I don't remember who the, it was a, it was a, a, uh, um, a priest who said, a, pro, a Protestant priest, I think, in Germany or in one of the countries, he said, when they came to take, the Jew, the gypsies. Nobody, nobody stepped up. I didn't say anything because I'm not a gypsy. And when they came to take the Jews, I didn't say anything because I'm not a Jew. When they came to take me, there wasn't anyone around anymore to save me. That statement is a very powerful statement. And this is what Mordechai is not willing to happen. He says, he comes out and he's not willing to let anyone else do either. He's sit out there. Is it possible he might have been able to make a protest with this? This is what he's doing. Making a protest. That's this, it said he came, he came by himself. This is what he's doing as an individual. Good. Again, being Good. in a point of power. They know him. These are people who know Mordechai. He's, he, he's in, the, in the government. He may be a minor, but he's in the government. He's out there and he says, Look! Look what's happened. Look what Haman's done. And I must say, in the, in the vein of what I just said about, about that priest, he's saying, If it happens to me... Who's to say you're not next? Who's to say it's not going to happen to you? It's completely random. You all know there's no reason for this. You all know this is not true and it's unjust, 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 unjust. I will not let you go on your day, continue your day, and think that everything's okay. I want to rock the boat. Yes. So 
So I'm, I'm pretty sure Mordecai might have like stirred up a protest here because it said that every single Jew and um, that there was in, uh, in a province was in great mourning and great fasting. Therefore, all, a lot of other Jews were like, Mordecai, we're with you on board with this. I, I a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Just Mordecai sitting in the game. Must be a bunch of other Jews. Great, I, I think. There, all possibly, and possibly. And must have saw or heard this, or probably one of her servants heard this and reported. It exactly right. Exactly right. So, That's what's gonna happen. That's gonna happen. They hear a commotion. Like, now I don't know if they on? knew it was Mordecai. Even they say there's this crazy guy outside wearing a sackcloth right in the entrance of the king. You know, you're not allowed to go in to the kingdom and do this. Exactly. They're right outside. They're like, there's this wacko he's guy. Like, and they say, who is this? Close so you can come to meet the king. He's like, nope, I'm just wearing sackcloth. Well, what, then I was going to invite him in because he can't wear it. We're going to see how more Esther's reaction in a minute. We'll get to Esther. But we have to remain in Mordecai for a second because it's really important to understand Mordecai's vision in politics and in injustice. Unju I can't say this word. Injustice, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Injustice. 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 Um, it, uh, Injustice and unjust. Is, the, is the is the state. Unjust is the occurrence. Like it happened. Okay, right. So it, it was unjust. It, was it unjust. is injustice. This is injustice. Okay, good. So anyway, sorry that I'm finding this back here first. Um, so but Mordechai, this is his statement. Now he's saying again, again, the Jews. This this is how Jews have to react. Jews don't say silent. Right? If any of you guys know in the USSR. Elie Wiesel wrote a book called The Jews of Silence about the Jews of the USSR. He wrote a book. They can say a word. He says, we have to be their voices. Us, the American Jews, we have to be their voices or the world, the Jew, world jewelry has to be their voices because they've been, they've been silenced. They can't say anything. The beginning, right? The very beginning of Am Yisrael's breaking out of servitude is when they yell. You got this word, Vayizaku, Mi'avuda. They yell from, when you yell, that is the beginning of the, because the real problem is when you don't even know that you're in servitude or if you don't have even the power to yell. If you are so enslaved, so downtrodden that you can't even yell, then you are completely under the foot. But if you have the ability even just to yell, that is the beginning of moving yourself from servitude to redemption. Moving yourself, understanding that there is a way. There is a way out of it. There is some, somehow, somewhere, someone may hear me. Someone who may agree with my plight, who may, may, may commiserate, who may, who may sympathize with what's happening to me and, and be moved to help me when the time comes. It may not even now. It could be in 10 years. It could be in 5 years. It could be later. I don't know when. But when push comes to shove. But if I'm quiet, then everyone can live happily with themselves and just say, you know what, I didn't know. Chaval, chaval. Oh, such a horrible thing when all those Jews were killed. Okay. Let's do real estate on all these houses that we can buy now. There's no one living there anymore. Right? I mean, it's really, it's how quickly can you move emotionally from one to the other? In a sense, this is what the press is for. Mordechai is the press. The press, right? Uh, the media. The media is supposed to point out injustice. In, it's, it's the, right? it's the, the watchdog of democracy. It's what they call the media. The media is what makes sure the government, not, not that it always works that way, but it's what's supposed to be, is to make sure the government doesn't do injustice. That's, what it's supposed, that's exactly what it's supposed to do, the media. And this is what Mordechai is doing. I'm not saying what it really does. I'm saying what it's supposed to do. It's, this is what it's supposed to do. By Metz, that's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to point something out and bring it to a grand scale and make the people who made the decisions that caused injustice to be embarrassed and to, 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 to rescind their, 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 what they're doing. That's exactly what they're supposed to do. Because I can't, I'm an individual, but the media has a mass appeal. So Mordechai is the media of the day. He goes out, and, the, and where is the media? Berachov. He goes to the street. He doesn't stay inside his house. It's very interesting. The other Jews, look what they do. They also go out. This idea of going outside. This is what we're trying to do. We're to, Mordechai's, as, as Ezra said, Mordechai's Sorry. example example sends the Jews out. To be noticed. To be noticed. Now, now, there are some people who are just happy to see them, right? They're, they're enemies we will see later are thousands and thousands of people who will happily kill them. 
um, they see it and they're very glad. But they don't understand, or maybe they do also understand, but there's nothing to do to stop them at the moment because they can't kill them yet, that the Jews are bringing sympathy to their plight. And as I said before, also hinting that, you know, this is happening to us. Who's to say you're not next? This is all what Mordechai is doing before we get to his discussion with Esther. And it's important to understand that this is how he's moving things. It's how the powerless become powerful by not being silent. By saying, I have a plight. Just, just even now, right? Like the, even, even on, the, on the basic level of Nechuyot. Oi, oi, oi. Someone who's... who's uh, uh, disabled, people who are disabled, right? People who have something wrong, disabled, mind, body, something. So for, for, for a long time, cover, throughout the world, you know, they were just, they lived or died by whatever happened. But as they got more powerful and there were protests, I don't know if you guys ever, ever heard, even in America, there was a mosh, like a, a known protest of, of people with disabilities here also. They, they let their voice be heard. And it changed. It changed. Uh, it changed. Uh, it changed the laws about all kinds of things. Things have to be accessible, wheelchair accessible, all kinds of things, and you have to accept more people. Words, they they yeah. almost kicked Einstein out of school for nothing. I mean, that's, a but that has nothing to do with disability. I, he, that that's he, not disability. That's just not good teachers. And not, really? he, he wasn't such a good student either, I guess. But Einstein, the, Einstein was autistic. They said, like, like, like in the middle. Spectrum. Really? Yeah. So okay, he so so that would be. And, and he I didn't speak until like five to seven years old. Interesting. And he was really uh, slowing down a lot in the class, and they didn't know why. And they learned that autistic people don't learn as fast as other people, but still have like uh, can like reach higher, greater. Uh, you have to have more people. sympathy and more, but the only right. way you could know it is you hear someone who has a disability in some way, you hear what he says, and then you understand, oh, wow, I never really thought of that. Oh, how do we help out that person? Okay, so this is, this is, this is, Mordechai's, this is Mordechai's actions. And he comes until the gate of the king, which is a fascinating thing. Inside the kingdom, we don't want to hear this. It's interesting. Right? Why can't you go inside the king? Why can't you go to the Shara Melech? Why can't you pass the Shara Melech? Because the king doesn't want to hear these things. It's interesting. The king, this is not a sympathetic king, per se. Because he has closed the gates to this. Now, is this a new rule, an old rule? I'd like to say it's a new rule. It's a new rule, this rule. Remember, the king has closed himself up. We're going to see in a minute, Esther's going to say, everybody knows that you can't get to the king. Was that always the rule? I'd like to say that it's the new rule from Haman's time. The rule at first was not like that at all. The king was pretty accessible. We have people going in, talking the Narea Melech are around the Melech, the Ro'ei HaMelech, the seven people who can see the king. Almost inherently, that means anyone can see the king. But now Esther says, everybody knows that no one can see the king. Even me, who is the queen, I can't see the king either. Because the king, physically and, and uh, metaphorically, has closed himself up. He doesn't want to see anyone. You want to see someone? Come on. I don't want to see anyone. Esther's going in to see the king is breaking that, just as Mordechai's going out to the gate is breaking that. Mordechai, that idea of breaking the one Opinion, the solo leadership of Haman, where the Mordechai is trying to break down now, to raise sympathy for the plight of others, not only accepting what Haman says, is it? Esther is going to do it the other way. She's going to go through the king and try to break in the, the leadership of one. That we'll see as we go on. So, another issue, or just an interesting thing to prove our point one more time. The Jews have an element of religion in. They're fasting. They fast and cry. And misped is also fast, I guess. Misped is like a eulogy, sort of. How does it translate misped? Lament. Lament. Okay, there is, a, th that, that seems to be pointing towards Hashem, right? Look at Mordechai. It doesn't say that. 
he's not fasting, he's not crying, and he's not, he's not lamenting. He's screaming, a zaka. Zaka is a, a, a cry of injustice. That's what these ok is. That's what Esav yelled. It's not fair what happened here. That's his za'aka. When Am Yisrael zo'ek, it's fascinating. They don't zo'ek el Hashem. You would think that's what it says there. No. They cry from the injustice of what's happening to them. Mordechai is not in the religious sense doing what he's doing. The people are. Esther is going to mix them together and make it its own. But, but, in, in, but Mordechai is screaming um, injustice on a grand scale which in itself is a religious concept. It's just not one we usually talk about. This is, this is part of the teachings of the Megillah, in my mind, and what's really important to understand that injustice isn't a civil concept. And the Megillah is teaching us as being one of the holy books, injustice is a religious concept. Injustice, as we saw in Yeshaya, when we talked about uh, Nehemia, when Nehemia making the walls of, of Yerushalayim, you guys remember? that uh, Whoever was with me in Nehemia and Barak, hey, when Nehemia makes the walls, we talked about the physical walls, and then he goes, he starts dealing with the injustice that's happening in the city. And we said it's, it's smack in the middle of the story of the walls. Right there, the walls, 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 building the walls, and suddenly... Some inner workings of how you were slaves, yes, free the slaves, not free the slaves, uh, the Jewish slaves, right? The lending, then the money, what's going on there? And then it continues with the walls. You're like, huh? What's going on here? Why is this stuck? I can understand why they tell us, but why in the middle? And we said that there's no such thing as building the walls of Yushalayim without being the walls of justice. Mordechai is taking this idea of justice in, I mean, obviously, to save the people also. But, uh, but we said the not bowing down to Haman came from this understanding that this is the next step. He didn't think it was happening to happen to the Jews, per se. But, but the next step in having a dictator, a solo voice in government, is great, great injustice. And it happens to them. Um, tov. Where are we in time? We're besedo. A couple more minutes. Um, Five minutes. Okay, Beseda. So these are the first three verses of, of, of the chapter. Um, now Esther's servants, Tavona Naarot Esther Vesarisea, a whole bunch of people, Vayagidullah. What do they tell her? <laughs> right? It's very interesting. Vayagidu La. Her uncle is in, uh, in front of the gate. Like do, do they know it's his uncle? This is a fascinating maybe, maybe question. Just some crazy guy. This guy. Is it just interesting? Is this yeah. a personal? Because afterwards it's going to say she gets very, very upset and she sends clothes in the same verse. She sends clothes to dress Mordechai and take off his sack. So it's very well that they could have said that it's your uncle, possibly if they know. But they could have said, there's this guy, Mordechai the Jew, who's out there, and she goes, she doesn't say to them necessarily, because we don't even know how much it's, they're going to be connected. At the end, if the, in, verse, in chapter 8, it's going to say, and, more, and Esther put her Mordechai in the house of Ammon, because she told the king what he is to her. Meaning that apparently it wasn't so known what he was to her. The king definitely didn't know about it. He knows Mordechai, a UD, is about to give him the let go on the crown, the, the, the king's horse and the king's clothes. But he doesn't connect. That's with Esther. And apparently no one told him either. Because she's the one who has to tell him then. So I think no one knows. I think she could, this is still a secret. Okay? The, 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 the connection between Mordechai and Esther is still a secret. Meaning also, yeah. no one knows Esther's a Jew. Right? right? It's, uh, what's it called? When looking at the Apostle, you're saying that uh, there was a bunch of people who were in sackcloth. That's what the maid said, telling Esther. Maybe. Maybe. But, but she definitely knows it's a Mordechai, right? Because she sends clothes to him. The Albishat Mordechai. Maybe too. they described uh, him to her. No, for sure. Yeah, it could be. I, I think they could have said Mordechai the Jew. I mean, and they don't know what that means to the queen. Yeah, I'm oh, they, they, yeah, and they don't, it's not like Mordechai, your uncle. It's Mordechai the Jew. It's out yeah. there. This Jewish guy, we don't know who he is, but he's making a real scene out there, <laughs> right? And everyone's coming. You know, everyone's like looking out the windows. Really have to see it. Everyone's looking out the windows, seeing Esther's far, and she doesn't even hear. And this is important to understand. She has to be told. She is somewhere deep, deep, deep in the castle. 
and she doesn't hear what's going on outside. It's important to understand where she is metaphorically, not only, not only, not only physically. She is deep in the castle, okay? Um, and they come and they tell her, and she gets tit chal chal. It's a very strange word, okay? Tit chal chal. You see what? How does it translate it? After what's her reaction? How do they say? Which pasuk is it? It's a, a verse four. After they tell her by Agidula, they tell her the first the first word. The queen is very something. Distressed. Distressed. So he says it. The queen was was exceedingly distressed. Right. So so the Ibn Ezra here says vatit chal chal nigizrat chil achaz yoshvei plashet. And it's a double. Chil, chil, chal, chal. Chil, achaz, chil is a trembling. She's trembling. Okay? When she hears this. There's something that shakes her to their bone when she hears what's happening to, to her, her uncle. Oh. So what does she do? And I'm going to end here because this is, a, this is, a, this is, a, this is a, I'm going to be... Close. She sends him clothes. Yeah. Wow. That's a great solution. He, poor guy doesn't have clothes. I mean, he's wearing a sackcloth. He must, he, must, he must have lost all his money gambling or something, and he's out there with a sackcloth screaming outside in the middle. I'm going to send him clothes. What do you think? Is that a good solution to the problem? We have a subtle hint Maybe. that you can, cannot... Sorry, sorry. No, please, please. Uh, we have a subtle hint that you cannot enter in sackcloth. Right, so for sure. This is a subtle hint saying you should be, because she's trying to avoid going to the king, and she actually hinting to Mordechai, you should go and... Uh... Well, I, I don't think it's that far. No, 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 I, mean, no, I think it's just... Think you're close to that. Um, she, he can't get a... past the, the gates, so maybe she's giving him clothes to get past the gates. Good pass. Okay. Assuming, yeah. Okay, yeah, but Esther, um, because... maybe she was told, okay, that's, that's Mordechai, and she is, oh, okay, message received. Now, she also wants to give him kind of a message, okay, um, what to do next. Like, she gives him clothes in order to um, for him to answer, okay, no, like, to, to resolve, the, resolve the, uh, the situation. And that Mordechai, by, like, that the servants come and say, hey, we have clothes from, from Queen Esther. So he understands, oh, my message uh, was received by Queen Esther. Like, like a, a subtle, subtle hint. A subtle hint yeah. that she's hint, that, she's hinting to him. That message received. Okay, what what next? What, what next? Okay, it could be. I'm going to be much more critical of Esther. But one more is that my idea of why she's giving him clothes is kind of uh, Mordechai's entire persona up until now has always been to be assimilated and to not stand out. Um, mm -hmm. This is what she was growing up with, living with him. Now she, she's gone into the palace. Now she's in a prominent place, but she's not standing out. Um, and this was Mordechai's also idea of getting into politics, getting into power without standing out. All of a sudden, she hears, whoa, what, what's going on here? Mordechai is in sackcloth, and he's standing out, and he's, cr and he's making a big ruckus. So maybe she's trying to, uh, you know, like, trying to figure out what's going on, try to... No, no, go, to... You're, everything you said now is perfect. Now just add one more thing. She wants to cover him up. She wants to cover him up. That's exactly, right. That's exactly. She wants to cover him up. She's like... Whoa! Exactly what Yosef said. I'm just continuing what Yosef said. Whoa! Like, what is going on here? This is exactly the opposite of everything we've done throughout our whole lives. She wants... And what is... He, what, we, I didn't read. I cheated. What's the last words in this pasuk? There's one more thing. Wait, what's the last words in the pasuk? And he didn't accept it. The Okay. There is a, there is a uh, tension here. She sends the clothes, and he says, No. Not this I'm not like, going to wear them. And now we that's where that's you understand that up until now you say, oh, and then he accepted and put it on. Uh-uh. There is something there's off. The there's something out. exactly. There's something off here between what her reading of the reality is and what his reading of the reality is. What exactly I mean, what Yosef is saying, I think that's exactly the key. We're gonna have to go into the depth of her understanding, not just that she's lost in the king, right? When he says to her, don't think you can hide in the palace from all of the Jews. That's already hinting to where she is right now. She's hiding in the palace. Hmm. Yeah, there was one more thing is that uh, until now, Mordechai has been in two places, um, but in between. 
he's been either uh, a, a Binyamite or a Jew, but uh, never really both or one or the other because uh, neither are really so accepting of him. Um, but now that he's come out in sackcloth, all the other Jews who, are, who had assimilated are also coming out in sackcloth and joining him. Now it's like one mind. Interesting. Yeah, fair. Now, what, what we have to understand, really, Mordechai, in using this, he has pulled the plug, the plug on what he was doing till now. Suddenly, the Jew, this is their language. This is the Jewish language. Hey, sackcloth. We like sackcloth. We always have sackcloth. Tisha B'Av. We know these things. We know. Yeah, I'm fasting. Okay. Misery. We know misery. That's us, right? <laughs> We've experienced this. No, but in, in a sense, they're saying, ah, oh, there's a Jewish heart beating under those Persian clothes. Ah, oh, suddenly we see it. We see this. These are the wordings that we know. This is the the way a Jew shows. This is something happening. So even though Mordechai, we talked about political, when it says the people, they interpret it as a religious thing. What was Mordechai himself doing? I have no problem saying he did both, really. Mordechai understood very well that what he's doing politically has religious overtones. It has a a a a a a a, a kap, kap e shmaya. It has something towards Hashem, also towards the king. I the, I think it's clear in the, in the in the in the psukim that that's something happening. It's not the focus because Mordechai is working on a different um, path, but it definitely doesn't mean he's not relating to that one too. And the Megillah definitely says the people go out and there's a religious concept. In other words, you're not fasting. There's no reason to fast if you're fighting. You better eat. If you're fighting, you better eat. If you're getting ready for to, to, to do something, fasting has no. It's it's a it's a it's a fuch in what you should be doing. It is, and we'll see in a sentence that fasting. We'll see this in the next lesson. Bezalat Hashem. And that's how we'll begin. How fasting is the opposite of what happens in Persia. Okay.